are filled with precious and pleasant riches. I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 19. Then we begin to have some talk from there. Let's speak from verse 13 of Proverbs chapter 3. Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding because the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain or the profit is better than that of fine gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies and all things you can desire cannot be compared to her. Length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Now these are the things that people seek when they are setting up or running their families. People seek long life and wealth and health and strength. But the scripture says the length of days is in the right hand of wisdom. The left hand has riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. Happy is everyone that retains her. Then he tells us in verse 19, The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding he has established the heavens. By knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. The Lord has founded the earth upon wisdom. And by wisdom is a house built. When we talk to spiritual people, and I know the altar upon which I stand and the work of revival that God has done through this ministry, but it is interesting that when the scripture talks about the building of the house, it did not say through prayer is a house built. It did not say that your house is built through prayer. And I already have your attention because some people are wondering, so are you saying prayer is not important? <laughs> it's not saying through prayer is a house built. God is the God of principles and every principle has its place. Every single principle has its place. There is the place for prayer. There is the place for sacrifice. There is a place for giving. There is a place for wisdom. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 1, sorry, in verse 23 and verse 24, it talks about Jesus being the wisdom of God and the power of God. That Jesus is both the wisdom of God and the power of God. So that when we receive Jesus, we have not just received the power of God, but we have also received the wisdom of God. How did God create the things that he created? How did God put in place a system that has stayed over time and the sun has never left its place, the moon and the sun have never collided, the sea, no matter how much it rages, still understands its boundaries, the earth is still in place. The scripture says he founded the earth on wisdom. He founded it on certain principles. And the moment you understand the principles that govern any institution, you set yourself up for success. Once you understand the principles that govern an institution, you set yourself up for success. Now, God's principles are universal. Anyone that applies them receives the desired result. That's why in Acts chapter 10 and verse 34, Peter says, Of a truth I perceive. That God is not a respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that fears God and works righteousness is accepted. So if somebody who does not know God applies the wisdom or the principles of God, they will have the desired result. If somebody who knows God does not apply the principles of an institution, they will not see the result that they need to see. Are we alright? So it means if a Hindu or a Muslim lives by God's principles in whatever way, they will see the desired results. They will see success. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, I'm laying the foundation. Then we talk a little bit about the marriage. He says, 
This book of the law, the wisdom of God, shall not depart from your mouth, but upon it shall you meditate day and night, and you shall observe to do according to everything that is written therein. Then shall you have good success. So he says your good success is dependent on your understanding of the principles of God. If you understand the principle, if you apply the principle, he says you shall have good success. So anyone then that applies the principle gets the result. Anybody that applies the principle gets the result. One of the challenges that we face in the church is that we have the assumption that as long as we both love God, everything will automatically work out. It's a very huge assumption that people make. That as long as we both love God, and as long as we are both saved, and as long as we both even attend the same church, when we come together, everything else will fall into place. Then people get together, and they begin to deal with one another, and they get frustrated because they did not expect that a believer, their spouse, would bring them to the place of the wilderness that they face sometimes, and the conflicts. When we deal with fellow believers, our expectations are usually very high. For some reason, we think that because we know God, we know how to relate with men. How you relate with God and how you relate with men is absolutely very different. Somebody can have a very strong relationship with God, but they're very poor at relating with people. You can be very spiritual and yet you are also very antisocial. Are we people right? You can be very spiritual, pray in tongues, you study the word and all of that, but you cannot talk with people. You are completely antisocial. You can be very spiritual but rude at the same time. You don't know how to speak, but you know how to speak in tongues, but you don't know how to speak kindly to people. So sometimes we make the assumption that because somebody has a form of the knowledge of God, then they will know how to treat people. You must learn how to treat people and how to relate with people. That means that you must learn people. You have to learn people to learn how to relate with people. And people are not general. Sitting under the sound of my voice here are individuals. Every person here is absolutely unique. There are general things that we can say, you know, men are like this and women are like this, but it is not absolute. Not every man fits into what we say, men are like this. Not every woman fits into what we say, women are like this. Because there is also the element of personality. There is also the element of upbringing. There is also the element of environment. You see, you grew up in a family with your siblings, you don't all act the same. You're not all the same. Because there is still the personality aspect. There is the individual aspect that you have. So it takes wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, to relate with human beings. It is not just about knowing them, but knowing what to do with what you know about them. There is nobody that you're going to find who is completely cut out for you. Absolutely no one. In fact, if you go back into Genesis and we start dealing with the wisdom of God, if you go back to Genesis, I said this year before, God did not give man a finished work. He said, take the garden, take care of it, tend it. Your marriage is your responsibility. Your marriage is your responsibility you cannot take your marriage and keep telling god to fix it all right glory be to jesus <laughs> uh, that's why i said when i started good to see you pastor sebastian that's why i said when i started he did not say a house is built by prayer you know why because sometimes we use prayer to escape responsibility. In fact, a lot of times, we use prayer to escape responsibility. You use prayer to avoid going to say, I'm sorry. 
you know you have offended somebody instead of saying i'm sorry you go to pray god touch their heart baxton are you well you're right is it because you're sitting next to your spouse now you're acting quiet all right sometimes it's very simple you just need to go and say i am sorry but somebody will not say i'm sorry so they are praying over a situation where they need to apologize about and they're failing to take their responsibility and they are trying to have god to fix it when god said you take care of it everything that god puts in your hand he gives you the capacity to work it out everything that god gives you everything that god puts you in charge of he gives you the capacity to work it out so when he put man on the earth he said be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it the responsibility of the earth was given to man not to god the responsibility of the earth was given to man when he was put in the garden the responsibility of the garden was given to man so your marriage is your responsibility can i hear better amen your marriage is your responsibility if you understand that we are fine to begin going it is your responsibility that means that if it is going to work it will take you to work it if it is going to be well if it is going to be strong it will take you it will require you to work it out glory hallelujah I was teaching last Sunday in church in Exodus chapter 14. Moses says to the people, when they saw Pharaoh coming after them, and they saw the sea ahead of them, and so Moses says to the people like a good pastor would, he says, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then God asks him, why are you telling the people to be still? Tell them to go forward. Now, Moses was trying to make the people feel God was going to solve the problem. God was saying, I'm not solving that problem. He says, use the rod in your hand to split the sea. There are things we ask God to do that he will not do. I don't like how you're trying to treat me. There are things we ask God to do that he will not do. There are things he has given you the power to do. Glory be to God. There are things he requires of you to take care of. And one of them is your marriage is your responsibility. No matter how much you pray about it, all God will give you is the wisdom to manage it. He will not fix it. He will give you the wisdom to fix it. He will give you the grace to manage it. But he is not coming down as God to fix it. There is no day God is calling you and your spouse to a meeting to talk to the two of you. <laughs> he is not going to summon the two of you around the table. He is not fixing that. He is not fixing that. He will give you grace, wisdom, instruction, direction. Now the two of you have to find a way to do it. One of the greatest killers of the marriage is pride 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 is one of the greatest killers because pride makes you feel you need to retain your position pride makes you feel you need to stand in your right i am right they are wrong they need to come to me and apologize they need to treat me in a certain way because I am right. So you stand in your right and you lose your marriage. Okay. <laughs> More people have lost their relationships by being right. <laughs> I'm going to keep trying. Man. A lot of people who have lost their relationships lost them by being right. Because you stood in the place of I am right, so you're waiting for a certain kind of response from the other person. And you stand in your ground, so you expect them either to apologize, say sorry, change, do something in a certain way. And when they don't do it, you feel offended. So you get the heart even the more. 
and you begin to feel this person does not care so what you're doing you're climbing even higher in your pride so you cut off communication i am not doing one two three until they do abc let me push it father let me push it let me tell you something mama do you know that every family stands on a woman it is biblical proverbs 14 verse 1 the scripture says a wise woman builds her house but a foolish one tears it with her own hands not the devil you know pastor kimel went into my message somewhere there when he said the devil finds a helper so i said okay I'll come and say he confirmed what I wanted to say. <laughs> it's not the devil that tears down a house. <laughs> Satan does not have the capacity to tear down your marriage. Let me say it again. The devil does not have the capacity to tear down your marriage. If two shall agree concerning anything here on earth it shall be done to them so the enemy does not have that capacity we are the ones who give him the room to do what he needs to do there are marriages that face absolutely crazy challenges and they stand then there are marriages that collapse on a text please wave over here there are marriages that collapse on a text. Somebody takes a phone. <laughs> I have a son who, you know, he grew in, in, in the marketplace and became a CEO of a certain real estate company. And one time he came back home and the wife saw on his phone a message by a young girl that he was helping and the message was good night. He went into the bathroom, came back. He found the wife sitting on the floor and she's crying. So he wondered what has happened in the short time that he had been in the bathroom. So he's wondering what's happening. She's saying nothing. When he pushed a bit further, he said, she said, I knew all you men are the same. So he's wondering, where has all these all you men are the same come from? See how Mombasa is trying to treat me. You know, because some of you are snoops. There's a magnet on the phone that keeps drawing you. Wisdom will teach you where to go. <laughs> Wisdom will teach you what business to mind. Sure. Do you know in life whatever you want to find, you will find it? Talk to me, people. You know whatever you want to find, you will find. If you want to find fault with my someone now, you'll find it. If you want to find something wrong with how I've dressed up now, you will find it. <laughs> Whatever you want to find, you will find it. Because we don't see things the way they are. We see things the way we are. You look at life through the shade of your mind. So if you have blue glasses, the whole world is blue. If you have red glasses, the whole world is red. So when this man started talking to the wife, then he realized there was this text that came in and the girl said, good night. And according to his wife, somebody wishing you good night is already too intimate. Well, I know some of you also in here. So she was willing to leave their marriages that break on a text. Nobody's talking to me here. There are others. <laughs> somebody's talking. Well, we, we'll get it right. We'll get it right. There are others where people are just talking. And so the gentleman is talking about business, how it was. And he say, you know, so today business was good. And then he talks. Then I had lunch with Susan and something. And then the woman does not hear anything else. When Susan was mentioned, that was it. 
So now he does not even hear what happened. He's stuck. She's stuck at Susan. And the man keeps on telling stories. Three weeks later, that Susan will be brought back. <laughs> so there are marriages that break on very, very simple things. Yet there are people who go through very difficult things, but because they have decided to work it out, they still stay. So it is not the devil that tears it. You're not talking to me. It's not the devil that tears it. It is the people in it <laughs> that destroy it. If you talk to some of the people who are over here, if they tell you the things that they have worked with, dealt with, covered, you'd have high blood pressure. <laughs> when some are fighting over who forgot whose birthday, <laughs> others have covered things. Show. Sure. Now, I'm not telling you to cover. I'm just saying from the onset that the success of your marriage depends on you. Look at your neighbor. Say, your marriage is your responsibility. I did not hear you. Tell them your marriage is your responsibility. <laughs> you allow what comes in and you allow what comes out of it. You shape it the way you want. You can never blame anybody for it. No. A wise woman builds her house. A foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. Let me talk about a woman. Now, this is why I said Pastor Kimeu went into my sermon. So I'll have, I'll have my demonstrating people. Pastor Sebastian, come together with your wife. All right. You come, come here yourself. Just wait there. Just wait. So God says, it is not good for man to be alone. This man that God was talking about was minding his business, doing something, fulfilling purpose. He had a God-given vision and mandate. He was not the one who prayed for a wife. It is not him who said, I need a helper. It was not man's idea. He did not go to God and say, I am lonely. This man was okay with God. Let me tell you the perfect man to marry. The one who is okay being alone. The one who cannot be alone. When they find themselves alone, they will look for a helper. JCC. <laughs> so the man that is ready for marriage is the man who can be alone. Until God says, it is not good for you to be alone. <laughs> that means he is okay with himself and God. Even if he travels abroad, he's okay being alone. <laughs> he doesn't have to find a helper in every city. Let me, let, let me talk on this side to Deacon Wekesa because you're all trying to treat me somehow. He's fine. He can mind business by himself until God interrupts him and says, this man is working too hard for him to be alone. So I'm going to give him somebody else so that he can communicate and somebody to help him. Huh. So he says, I am going to make him a helper. There was a conversation that was going on. God says, it is not good for man to be alone. I am going to make him a helper. You must understand the devil never knows anything until God speaks. This man that was here was given the garden. He was given authority. He was given dominion. 
he was given everything that satan ever wanted are you still with me everything satan ever wanted was given to this man then this man had a relationship with god that made it difficult for the enemy to bring him down but then one day the devil hears god saying i will make him a helper <laughs> so the mind of the enemy or rather let me say if i was the enemy and i need a strategy because i cannot penetrate this man he is deeply rooted in god i will look for the one that is coming in as a late karma because i want to enter the garden and i cannot enter through there then i hear there is somebody else coming so i will look for this somebody else that is coming to gain access from the very beginning the woman became a target of the enemy to enter the family i'm still gonna keep trying so this one that is the late entrant is the one satan comes to have a conversation with you don't hear him talking to adam so he decides let me talk to the one who was not there when the garden was given and when the instruction was given and he says to her not because she's a woman no but because she came in second I need you to understand that if the woman came first and the man came in later he would still have gone for Adam so he was coming for the one that did not hear the instruction so he comes to the woman and says did God really say he was looking for an entry into this union did God really say <laughs> planted the seed of doubt did God really say and she says well we were told we can eat of the fruit of the trees apart from the one in the middle of the garden he said the day we eat of that we shall die then the devil says you shall not surely die ladies and gentlemen let me tell you this and especially the gentlemen you must understand this when you stop talking to Eve, the devil will. I'm going to try this other side. A woman is naturally conversational. A woman is naturally a conversational being. You stop talking to her, somebody will. Or something will. If she doesn't talk to real human beings, she will talk to soap operas. You will be amazed at how many women form their philosophy out of a soap opera. She will sit there and watch it 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 and keep on hearing what Alejandro is saying. And so she's now in love with Alejandro. She's wondering what you are doing in her life because she wishes it was Alejandro. She starts watching football. You think she has joined in watching football, but now she has fallen in love with Cristiano Ronaldo. You just keep on hearing the comments she's making. Because you have stopped having conversation. Nobody's talking to me over here. That means every man must be a converser. I told you by wisdom is a house built. This is wisdom in building the house. Conversation. If it stops here, someone else or something else will be speaking here. So the devil says, you will not die. You will not die. Let me say something again to you lady, to, to the gentleman over here. It is very possible for you to leave the house in the morning and you are all fine and by the time you come back three hours later, four hours later, you find a different mood. 
The mood has changed right there. Because there has been a conversation. That conversation could have been a book. It could have been a story. It could have been something she saw on Facebook. It can be anything. But there has been a conversation. She has stumbled into something on Facebook on Kilimani Moms that has reminded her of how you behave. So when you're coming, you come in as a suspect. You guys, man. It can even be something she just had in a matatu with a stranger. And the women, you know I'm telling the truth. It can even be something she just had with strangers talking. And then light bulb she begins thinking oh is that how my husband is that why he's behaving like that so you are coming in into a very different environment because there has been a different conversation and you think that because you left in the morning and say i'll see you in the evening you think the weather is the same Listen to me. Every man must keep checking on his woman. The weather can change suddenly. <laughs> and very drastically. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. The wind can blow from where you don't know. <laughs> and suddenly the clouds just turn dark. And sometimes it has nothing even to do with you. It can be with everything else somewhere else. You see, men are very predictable. Women are not. Men are predictable. That's why when a man lies, you will catch him. When a man cheats, you will catch him. Men are predictable. It's very easy. He will change. He will start unbuttoning up to here. You know, so now you're wondering, so who are you showing your chest? You'll realize he has changed his cologne, all of that. Men are very predictable. <laughs> but a woman can lie without you knowing. I'm not sure you guys were ready for me to come to Mombasa. I mean, she can lie and convince you that your name is not your name. <laughs> men, men are very clumsy. You see, because men go one direction. So it's so easy. It's so easy to predict. The moment he changes his direction, you know. Which way are you going? But you see, women, they use calves. So it's very difficult to tell. You only catch a woman when she wants you to catch her. I'm going to say that again in English. A woman is only caught when she has decided to be caught. <laughs> a man is caught without effort. Because a lot of women operate in the miscellaneous realm. So, never really can tell. So every man must have conversations. Look at the man next to you say, you must have conversations. Please, don't be afraid of them. Tell them you need to have conversations. <laughs> you know, there are men who even when they travel... They will never call or text their wives for a whole week. They say, but I left her with everything. You didn't. You left money. You didn't leave everything. So if you keep on leaving money and you don't leave everything, she will use the money to get everything. <laughs> yes. She will use that money to get somebody who talks to her. Now you'll see she has the money, she doesn't have you. So she's going to the gym every day. Then the gym instructor <laughs> is paying attention. Move your leg like this, move your arm like this. Now stretch to here. 
Then she's feeling the muscle. <laughs> Those are conversations. I started by telling you, we think that when we marry people who are saved, it will be all alright. So we don't meet needs of people because we are praying for God to meet those needs. God will not love your wife for you. <laughs> he already loved her and sent Jesus to die. Now the other love, it's you. So there was a conversation going on here. And he says, did God really say, say, if we do that, we will die. Say, you will not die. God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. This was the second mess. The second mess was when, <laughs> are you ready for this? The second mess come now, was when this man accepted to be fed by the woman. Oh God. It was Adam that was given the garden. It was Adam who was told, take care of it, tend it. Anything that comes after you is your responsibility. I'm looking at you with my eyes open. If she was not here when he was given the garden, why is she the one feeding him? Every time, every time, this one is fed from here, he loses authority. <laughs> every time, this is where the apple or the orange, whatever fruit it was, is coming from. Something is lost here. All the men shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> there are temporary setbacks. There are times when things do not work the way we want. But every man must be passionate about his dreams. Every man must be determined to provide. Let it be that it is things that did not work. Not that you folded your hands. Because your wife has a good job. Then you twist the Bible. And say because you are the head. She should bring the money. Then you will decide what to do with it. If you cannot make money. How can you manage it? If you elect a poor man into office. The first thing he will try to do. Is to gather. For himself. So the second mistake that this man made was to allow the order to be changed.